If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about the books that I'm hoping to read during the month of April. It's my birthday month and quite frankly, I have been in a funk and it's been affecting me reading. I'm still reading, but like I'm struggling to find favorites and even when I do find some that I like, it doesn't feel like it's making me not be in a reading slump. So I feel like I chose a good TBR of books that I'm hoping will get me out of there, hopefully. <laughs> I feel like even my background is a mess right now. I need to reorganize my bookshelves, but that's all uh, in my plans for May. Well, before the end of the month, basically. So, my TBR. The first book is our Patreon book club pick of the month. You guys voted. I was going to choose a fantasy no matter what. All three options were. And two of them are books that I'm hoping to do reading vlogs about that are apparently really readable, which is what I need. And you guys voted for this one. This is One Dark Window. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know anything about this except that it is an adult fantasy, I think a little horror, and that it's supposed to be super readable. And again, I have been desperate. I, I know there's some hype, which was key for me. I wanted to just do a reading vlog, reading for a weekend or something, just reading something that is really hyped that apparently you can't put down. I desperately need this. I feel like these kind of vlogs can be fun because sometimes, yes, I end up hating the book, but I have a lot of fun doing the reading vlogs. Like. Ice Planet Barbarians. I feel like that's the perfect example. But sometimes I ended up also really enjoying it and being part of the fandom. So who knows? It's the first book in a series. So again, if I like it, I'll just get the next one. So that's the first one on my own TBR. Uh, the second book that is part of that, it was hype and I got it hoping that it would solve my issues, is this one. This is Divine Rivals, which is also a fantasy, but I believe this one is Y, which can be a little bit more hit and miss, but no matter what you think of Y, you have to admit that they tend to be really readable, which once again, if you are in a reading slump, I feel like they are key, the readable books, to getting you out of it. So I'm trusting you. Again, will it be cringe? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I will love the romance. Who knows? So these two literally bought them without knowing anything of it. That's okay. Uh, hopefully, these solve my issues. I'm hoping to do a reading vlog of both. If you have a favorite, let me know, but it will happen. Hopefully it goes well. The second book for our book club is for the classic version. And we have three months this year to read them instead of two because I wanted to give myself a break. Uh, it does look like a small book, but it is the <laughs> this humongous edition of The Age of Innocence. I really want to try to read more classic written by female authors. I feel like you see a lot of the popular ones. I, I have a minor in French literature and we've mostly read male authors. So I tried to go out of my way to find female authors and that was one of them. I believe this was made into a movie. I've seen like pictures of it, but I haven't watched it. And I just wanted to give it a shot when I saw this edition. Was it two years ago already? Damn, a year ago, two? Anyway, I thought it was ridiculous. I needed to own this because I thought it was beautiful. And uh, once I got it at home, I was like, I'm never gonna read this. <laughs> Cause like, look how much you have to read to be able to turn a page. <laughs> so I thought that was perfect to include it with the book club. I will feel more motivated. But yes, my edition is hundred pages. I don't even know what a normal edition, how many pages a normal edition has and I don't care. So now that we have three months to read it, I will hopefully get to it. I'm gonna be honest, probably not in April because of the slump, but if you want to start early, that's the one. I know there's a romance. I think it was set in New York. My edition has like literally no info about it. There's a romance. I thought it was set in New York. I'll find out when I read it. Now, I feel like this is almost a book haul too because I'm showing you books that I haven't shown that I bought. I haven't been buying a lot of books. That's why I haven't done a book haul. I'll probably do one by the end of April and I'll probably have read a couple of them. So you get a review at the same time. But I didn't know this book existed until someone told me in the comment section. Thank you so much. This is the last interview. It's basically a bunch of interviews with Octavia E. Butler. One of them or just a bunch of them? Yeah, it's a bunch of them. And I love her. She is probably my favorite author. I don't like choosing one, but like she's probably my favorite author. Currently I'm trying to read everything she has ever written, at least her full length novels, and I'm almost done. So when I found out that this existed, I was like, you know what? I want to read this. And yeah, I'm really excited. It's not super long. It's like less than 200 pages, but again, it is interview style. So this should help me with the slump. I feel like it's motivating whenever you can finish a book. 
and I want to get to know her more. I feel like you get a little bit more about her in Blood Child because it's a collection. It's a collection of short story that she has written, but there's a little bit of an afterword after each of them, and you get to know her more because she's explained where that idea was coming from, where she was at in life, and the more I get to know her, the more I like her. So, next. Okay. Again, we're continuing with the book. <laughs> that was not planned. I read one book by this author during the month of March. Really enjoyed it, and I already owned this other one that I almost read, but I didn't get to it. This is D. Allen of Missing Trees, and I liked the other book that I read so much by her that I ended up buying this one, which is The 40 Rules of Love, which I think this is her most well-known one. So, which one should I read? I feel like I should have just read the one I own already, but you know, it's her most popular. Now I'm curious. I really enjoyed the other one. I'll talk about it in my, my March wrap-up. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but all of her books seems to be books that hurt. <laughs> like a lot of like emotional pain. This one follows a unhappy American housewife, but it's about love. And I feel like her other book was also about love, but like friendship kind of love. And I am ready for the pain. I am. And I know I will because the other one I almost cried and I don't cry easily when I read books. So this is it. But I think I'm going to choose this one, but feel free to convince me if this one is better. But I want more pain in my life. I feel like I read a lot of dark books, but not often like sad books. So that's, that's a nice change for me. And I mean, you know, reading slump, it might sound like a bad idea to read really emotional books, but it's the opposite for me because I feel like I want to feel something. When you keep reading books and everyone raves about the characters or the story and you just feel nothing, it makes you feel super disconnected and like, I don't really care. <laughs> it makes you feel like you have the issue, but then you find a book that you actually connect to and it makes you realize, okay, that other book just isn't, didn't work for me. Um, also, I didn't get to that one during the month of March, but a few of you actually told me that you really did enjoy this one. And I've been wanting to try more uh, female authors because I was trying to read more translated work. And I said I was done with Japanese translation because again, the writing tends to make me feel really disconnected. And you guys told me that I actually should try a few female authors. And she was the first one that I found that sounded really appealing to me. This is Breads. Breads. Mm -hmm. Breasts and Eggs, which you've only three women. Uh, it's a social commentary. It's like a, kind of a feminist book and a radical and intimate portrait of contemporary working class womanhood. Following the heartbreaking journeys of three women in a society where the odds are stacked against them. So I'm really looking forward to that one. A lot of you told me that one was really good. There's another author you guys told me to check out. Uh, I think the book was Kitchen by, I don't remember her first name, but uh, I think it's Banana, her last name. Let me know. Is that her best book or, you know, one that you enjoyed? And I will check her out too. But yes, I'm looking forward to that one. There was the, this in there because I was hoping to get to it, but like the slump, I just don't feel like reading much. So but it's on my list. I know Emily Henry is coming out with a book in April, but is it like the 28th or something? So I'll put it on screen. Um, I, is it a funny story? I think so. Listen, I pre-ordered it, okay? I wanna read it, but realistically, will I have time to read it in April? Probably not. If it comes out a little bit earlier than that, I'll try to like sneak it in because I really enjoyed vlogging or other books because I ended up really falling in love with her. So far out of the four books that I've read by her, uh, I really loved Beach Love and Beach Read <laughs> and uh, Book Lovers. Both five stars, really enjoyed those, would recommend. And the other two, People We Meet on Vacation and Happy Place, that's what it is, uh, were okay. Like I didn't hate them, but they weren't for me. I feel like I tend to like her enemies to lovers better. I feel like they just made more sense. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to trying this one. It sounds like it's an enemies to lover. Either way, I want to try. I want to try it, and hopefully, I have time for it in April. Otherwise, March. And then, if nothing works out, if I'm having the worst time ever, uh, we're gonna go back to reading chunky fantasy. Um, <laughs> I was hoping I would have time for it again in March. Didn't happen. I'm a little scared of it because not only the size, but it's the first book in an adult fantasy series. And I read another book by him. It was my first book of the year. Really enjoyed it. And I hate that I have to wait who knows how long for him to actually finish writing that series. So I wanted to try something that is completed by him. But then a few of you told me that book one is good, but two is confusing. And I'm, now I'm like worried a little bit. Do I want to commit to this? <laughs> Either way, I have the first one, I want to get to it, but I can't forget that I'm also going to be doing, like, I always do my read it or unhaul it challenge from, where is it? The Ridiculously Giant Jar over there. 
So that's gonna take me at least a week. I feel like this month took me like 10 plus days. So that took a good chunk of my reading time, but I'll try to sink that in. And who knows how many books I'll go through with that challenge. I'm feeling the spring cleaning vibes. I'm really starting to feel like I wanna clean up. But like I said, in May, wait for that TBR. That should, that should add quite a few books to my annual unhaul video that happens usually in June. So audiobook. I'm currently listening to Life As We Knew It. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. Um, but I do have, I still have Demon Copperhead on my list. Um, I feel like it's a summer read though. Feel, feel free to convince me otherwise because when I come into it, it's 21 hours long. So it's going to be like a whole month of listening to that book. So let me know. Should I keep it for the summer? Should I just actually get to that one? You decide. Also got my hands on Tom Lake, which this one is narrated by Meryl Streep, which I've been really wanting to listen to that one. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. First off the cover. <laughs> I don't often fall in love with the cover, but this one I thought was really, really pretty. Uh, and then you guys told me that it was performed by Meryl Streep and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I actually really want to listen to that one. And it screams summer read also, so I don't know. I think I'm really starting to be over the crappy weather and I wanna pretend that it's summer. But I feel like I look at all the books that I could be listening to from the library and I don't know what to pick. Usually I'm really decisive with that. So I'm gonna put some on the screen uh, and you you get to decide because I could, I could. I think I'm just overdue for a library TBR showing you what's on my list so you can tell me which ones I should pick. I keep my exoskeleton to myself, which that one, instead of going to prison, people that do something wrong get like a shadow following them around. It says sometimes a third, a fourth, or a fifth as a reminder of their crime. So we'll see what happens. Even though I said I wasn't doing my Goodreads Choice Award uh, this year, I still like to get some ideas for, mi uh, not mystery, never the mystery trailers anymore, but like the fantasy and sci-fi sections. It's just the newest releases, right? I did have uh, Ink Blood Sister Scribe, which I think this was fantasy with like magic. I did have nonfiction, which I haven't been reading a lot of nonfiction so far this year. I did have Poverty by America. Uh, we're going back to my jam, These Burning Stars, and then Chain Gang All Stars. I have Moon of the Turning Leaves. I feel like once I start them, I'll actually enjoy myself, but I've been just in a blah mood. So that's why these ones, especially the readable ones, I think I'm going to start one today or this weekend for Easter. Let's go. I'm going to try to read one of them and we'll see if it can... Uh, motivate me. I feel like once you start getting in the mood and you get really readable books, it really, really helps. I, <laughs> you know, the worst part is that I used to not really get in reading slumps so or it would just last, you know, a few weeks or something. I did videos uh, sharing you tips and tricks and then some books that you could pick up. <laughs> and now here I am struggling like crazy. <laughs> to be fair, I think the trickiest part to get out of a reading slump is to pick books that will help. Like, you don't know before you try them. I have been doing the opposite, which is also in my tips and tricks video, and it's to do other things. So I've been watching uh, the Three Body Problem TV show. I finished it. I enjoyed it. I like some of the changes that they've actually made. Mostly, I like the characters so much more than in the book. In the book, I just couldn't stand anyone. They were, like, 2D. Like, they, they were not likable whatsoever. And... In a TV show, I was a lot more attached to them, and I'm really looking forward to season two. The question is, how long will it take to get season two? Anyway, that's it. That's my TBR. That's my hopes for April. We're hoping for... It's my birthday month. Like, we need a good birthday month. Uh, hopefully, a couple of them will be five stars. If not, I don't know. I'll probably just read some Ren Sanderson. I have yet to continue the Stormlight Archive series. I will pick up book three in May. If I don't have a good month, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, or maybe I'll let you decide my whole TBR. You choose. <laughs> that's it. I hope you are prepared for April as much as I am. Thumbs up, subscribe. I'll put more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will go back to ignoring the messy room. And I'll read a book. <laughs> Bye.